Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create a quick and easy spotlight card using just a piece of black and white pattern paper. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. A couple days ago, I shared a video with you how I created eight quick and easy spotlight cards using a pair of pattern papers where one was the black and white version and one was the colored version of it. Today, I'm going to show you how to get this same effect when you only have one black and white pattern paper and not the colored version. If you want to see this video, I will have it linked below and I will put it at the end of this video as a card. The spotlight stamping technique is a pretty tried and true vintage, old school, whatever you want to call it technique. Normally you would stamp an image, cut out part of it, color only that small part, to kind of highlight it or spotlight it. Well, I wanted to see what I could do without stamping. In my last video, I didn't have to do any coloring for this technique, but in today's video, I will be. For my coloring, I'm gonna use just regular colored pencils. These are nothing fancy. And I don't even think that I'm gonna get out my Gamsol, which I would usually use for blending. For my stamp set, I'm gonna use another Cornish Heritage Farm stamp set. And this is the Motivational Centers. I think for the times we're going through now where we're having to socially distance ourselves, I want to be sending some cards out and I thought a few of these on here were encouraging for the times. Finally, for my main product, I got this piece of paper from the same paper pack that I used the other day. It is the Butterfly Botanicals Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up! And this was a celebration last year, not the current one, unfortunately. But you might have a pattern paper in your own stash that will work for this as well. Let's use what we have, save our money. As I start the process of this card, I will go into a voiceover. So if I add any products, I'll try to let you know, but if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Oops, I forgot to hit record when I was doing the cutting and die cutting. So I'll go ahead and explain here to you how I got started. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them below. What I did was I cut a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half from the top left corner of my pattern paper. Once that was done, I got out a circle die and I picked a good size and figured out which butterfly I wanted to spotlight and I die cut just that part out of the four and a quarter by five and a half. Once that was cut out, I chose a scallop circle die that fit nicely behind the butterfly cutout, and then I used a scrap of yellow cardstock on that die. Both of these dies are from a Spellbinders Nestability set. Now let's go ahead and get started on the card. Off camera, I chose some colors that I wanted to start with. The yellow, I tried to get one that kind of matched the scallop circle. I started by coloring my butterfly, which I used the green and the blue pencils for. I did not use any special technique here or do anything special at all. I just tried to have a light touch with my colored pencils. For the flowers, I used orange and yellow and brown for the centers. And then later I pulled out a light blue for the background as well as a green to color in some of the leaves and stems. And here's a look at the finished colored piece. For this card base, I chose a top fold card and I started by putting adhesive on the back of the larger piece of pattern paper. I did make sure that I got those little corners well so they would stick down nicely. And then once I had that in place, I put my butterfly colored piece centered on the scallop circle. And then I got out some foam tape squares or rectangles that I will be popping this up on the card with. 
I did my best to align that scallop circle so that when I cut off the excess on the top, it would cut right along where the pattern paper was already trimmed off at. For my sentiment, I chose VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I grabbed that scrap of yellow cardstock from the scallop circle, and then from my stamp set, I chose the sentiment that said, do what you can with what you have wherever you are, and that is a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. Once I had my stamp inked up, I tried to stamp it as straight as possible toward the bottom edge of that open yellow area. You'll see later why I did that, but for now I trimmed down my piece so it would be two inches wide. And I just used my little Fiskars guillotine trimmer and I just tweaked it just trimming a little bit at a time until I liked how it was centered and when it was two inches wide. I did cut it to two inches for a specific reason because this Stampin' Up! triple banner punch, that is one of the sizes that will fit in there. Now you'll notice that I did turn it over so I could see if I would be cutting any text off and because originally it did, I adjusted it a little bit and then I had to get out my scissors to finish making that just nice and square and pointed at the bottom. I roughly marked this strip where I wanted to cut it and then I got that guillotine trimmer back out. Once I had cut off the top, I decided that I wanted it just a little bit more trimmed off so I got that back out, cut off about another quarter inch and then I used my Scotch ATG to put adhesive on the back and adhere that right underneath the scallop circle on the front of the card. Before any card is complete, it usually needs a little bling, so I got out some blue gems to match my butterfly wings, and I added three tiny gems to the front of my card. And here are some looks at the final card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this little card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.